dangerous storm and potentially could affect the Caribbean, the Lesser Antilles, uh, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, potentially the East Coast and the Gulf of Mexico or Florida. That's why we need to pay attention. So heading into Sunday, Monday, Category 4, there is the potential for this to be a Category 5 hurricane. Nothing in its way in terms of intensification. This is the Euro model, again, one of our reliable forecast models. This is Tuesday, Lesser Antilles, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Cuba, and then perhaps moving into the Gulf of Mexico. Let's look at the GFS. All right, still a very powerful hurricane, moves towards the west, westward, 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 and then this one sort of takes a bit of a more northerly tour. Let's see if I can get my maps to work. There we go. That is a very dangerous hurricane right there, and it moves up towards the southeast. Okay, this is days ahead. This is next weekend. But what I can tell you is if you live along the East Coast, if you live in Florida, if you live along the Gulf Coast, you need to pay close attention to this storm as well as the potential storm in the Gulf of Mexico. Also want to make mention, this is Tropical Storm Lydia, could potentially also be a hurricane and affect Cabo in the next couple of days. So busy, so crucial. I don't want to scare. I want people to be aware. We are into peak season. We could potentially have a very dangerous hurricane on our hands in five to seven days that could potentially hit the East Coast, Florida, Gulf Coast. And then we are also watching the potential for a storm this weekend in the Gulf of Mexico that potentially could bring more rainfall to areas affected by Harvey. We will keep you posted. Listen to your local weather services. Listen to your local officials. Have a preparation plan. Know what to do if there's a hurricane. Now tracking near your Category 2 Hurricane Irma. This one has intensified rapidly. And if you had a chance to tune in with us last night, this was showing signs that it was going to strengthen rather quickly because it was very well defined. There's nothing hindering its development. There's no wind shear out there. It has a lot of moisture to work with. So right now, winds are sustained at 100 miles per hour. It's continuing to move west northwest at about 10 miles per hour. But look very closely. You can see it's starting to develop a very well defined find eye, which is also indicative of intensification. Usually when you get a well-defined eye, uh, not too much longer, it does become a major hurricane. And when we say major hurricane, it means category three or higher. So it's well within the realm of possibilities that we could see this become a major category three hurricane before the day is over or even possibly as late as tomorrow morning. So it's definitely going to be worth watching over the coming days. Uh, here's the latest track on this for you. As you can see, here we are Friday morning, category three hurricane forecasted about 100 120 miles per hour, but as I said, it could easily become a Category 3 even before that. Then it continues on through Saturday morning. Again, remains a major Category 3 hurricane, and then we take it out to about Tuesday, and by then it could become a Category 4 hurricane with wind sustained at 130 miles per hour. But even by then, it's possible it may be a Category 5 hurricane. That's a little bit of a wait-and-see situation, but again, there's nothing hindering it from intensifying that rapidly. Now you can see this is actually the National Hurricane Center track here for you, and it's taking Irma towards the Lesser Antilles. Question is, where does it go from there? Does it kind of come up the eastern seaboard? Does it go uh, into the Gulf of Mexico? That would be disastrous. I mean, this storm going anywhere near land is going to be disastrous. So I'm really hoping this uh, one anomalous uh, spaghetti model here is actually going to be correct because it would keep it away from land. It keeps it away from the Gulf, keeps it away from the eastern seaboard, keeps it away from Bermuda. So that would be ideal. But at least you can see most of them, uh, you know, do keep on the same track and then have it curving a little bit close for comfort here. Here's a look at the model difference. These are the two uh, we often talk about. We talk about the GFS, which is also known as the American model, and we also talk about the European model. So the American one is the one in pink. The European is the one in white. And this is set to take you out to next Sunday, September 10th. Do not like where the GFS has this position, but it's kind of been all over the place because the run before this had it a little bit farther out to sea and a little farther to the north. So I do want to tell you to take this with a grain of salt, but I will say the intensity of this storm has remained consistent with the American model and so far the European model, keeping this one farther off to the south, having it run right across Cuba and then potentially into the Gulf of Mexico. That wouldn't exactly be ideal either. So unfortunately, not loving the way either one of those models is shaping up for any.
everybody. Here's a look at Tropical Depression. Harvey continues to have a lot of moisture associated with it. Winds at 100 miles an hour. It's moving to the west-northwest at about 10 miles an hour. So not a super fast pace, but a good clip. And we are going to continue to see this westward track. Now look at this. We're looking at it reaching 130 miles an hour, which would mean major hurricane status by the time we get to Tuesday morning, and it's approaching the Leeward Islands. But again, this is a five-day forecast. So this is not a quick thing. This is not sneaking up on anyone. And it's important to note these are kind of the tracks the areas for development that we see in September so following right along with that and the computer models in pretty decent agreement that this could go any of these directions so it's definitely one to watch too soon to say whether or not we'll see US impacts but it's definitely one to keep our eyes on for you have another uh, system out in the Atlantic it was a tropical storm earlier this morning but the latest update from the National Hurricane Center now has Irma as a category 2 hurricane it is moving off to the west and is forecast to be a major hurricane by tomorrow and early next week threatening the eastern parts of the Caribbean and our computer models after that pretty spread out as to where the storm goes afterward. The good news is only 10 to 15 percent of hurricanes where Irma is right now hit the United States. Dana. Jeff Jamison from KTVT, our Dallas station. Thank you. The Hurricane Center has just said that at 11 a.m. they will officially name it and post advisories for Tropical Storm Irma. And uh, the reason we really want to keep attention, close watch on this storm, is because by the end of next week it is likely to be just north of the Dominican Republic. Wow. Okay, we'll be watching it closely. Thank you, Shay. Irma expected to be a June. Hurricane Irma has absolutely blown up in the far tropical Atlantic with 100 mile an hour winds, a fierce category two hurricane. This morning it was just a tropical storm. It hit some very hot waters. It hit no wind shear and it has blown up not only its size, its magnitude, but in its organization. You can really see a well-defined eye. Irma expected to be a major hurricane as we head into tonight and then it will continue to traverse westward, west-northwest, across the open tropical Atlantic. By Sunday, a Category 3, maintaining that status, 130 mile an hour winds as we get into early Tuesday and knocking on the doorstep of the Caribbean with the Lesser Antilles. Where it goes after that, the models are split. One wants to take it out to sea, the other takes it more toward the eastern seaboard, possibly even Florida. What we can tell you, there's a great consensus that this is going to be a huge and very strong, extremely dangerous hurricane, a Category 4 as we get into early Tuesday morning. You can see it's spinning out here, good model consensus in the short term, more divergent as we get into the long term. If it were to affect South Florida at the current rate, it would be sometime as we head into late next week. So if it were to affect South Florida at the current rate, it would be sometime consensus in the short term, more divergent as we get into the long term. If it were to affect South Florida at the current rate, it would be some, if it were to affect South Florida at the current rate, it would be sometime as we head into it is expected late next to become a hurricane by Friday morning, a category one hurricane. And then from there, there's a lot of speculation whether it goes farther north or farther south. Why? Well, the computer models, each line you see here is a different rendering of the scenario that could play out. Some as it gets towards the end of this forecast period goes a little bit farther north and some go a little farther south. This time of the year it's almost just as important to see the strength and the positioning of something called a Bermuda High that sits over the middle parts of the Atlantic. If it was to be rather weak, that'll usually drive these systems to move west and then do that little loop out to sea and we call it a fish storm at that point. If it's just a little bit stronger and positioned a little bit farther towards the west, it'll actually push it right towards the eastern seaboard. If it's really, really strong, then it'll push it even farther to the west and way south of our region well, and into the Gulf of Mexico. Is where our attention really turns next. This is a very healthy, very strong tropical storm and it's still strengthening. Right now wind speeds at 70 miles per hour, so four more miles per hour and it's a hurricane. In fact, it's forecast to become a major hurricane, a category three over the weekend. The track takes it through, uh, through the open Atlantic through uh, the start of the next week. But it's the long range forecast that we still have a few kinks to work out. Some models are saying one thing, another model saying the other thing.